Hi folks, welcome back to the Academy. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Warren Bennett, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an exercise that you can improve and work on your golf swing in the time it takes to boil a cup of tea. You can do this exercise indoors, so I'm gonna head into the Academy, set up, and I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back indoors, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Um, you might hear the front of the shutter rattling a little bit. Um, we've got a very windy day outside at the moment, so I apologize if that comes through on the microphone during this video. And like I said just before the intro, you can do this exercise whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Now, this exercise was given to me by a golf coach and a golf pro called Ian Connolly. Um, Ian was a very, very well-respected coach, um, especially back in the 80s. Um, he taught Nick Faldo up until the Leadbetter years, so this exercise comes from great stock, and I've never really forgotten about it. Um, I've always, and I've done it myself during my, especially my latter years over the last five to six years. So let me show you what I'm on about. Now, I'm sure everyone in their kitchen has a tray. Uh, this exercise is actually called Hold the Tray, um, but you don't actually have to do this exercise with one. You can actually do it with a magazine, anything flat, or you can actually do it just with your hands together like that. That's probably the best way anyway, it saves you having to grab something every time. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna do it with a tray because that's what it's called. Now, not going mad, this exercise is great for those guys who are suffering from a bit of an over the top, um, but it's great for everyone. It's really gonna give you the sensation about where you want your downswing to go. So let's get going. So place the tray or magazine, between your hands, flat like that, and then take your address position. Now I'm gonna assume you've got a relatively decent backswing. So what this purpose of this drill is, is from the top of the backswing to halfway down. The halfway down is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. So let me show you what I just did there. The backswing, now the purpose is to open this tray and hold the tray halfway down. So, the, so if you had some drinks, you wouldn't spill it. Now what's actually happening there is your, is your wrist or your, both your hands are re-rotating down and opening up. So if you can imagine, which I'll show you from the, um, the side view in a minute, is the club will drop behind you in shallow off and it'll create a little bit more lag as well. So if you can imagine that if the club, if I had a club in my hand, the club's gonna be way back there. So let me show you again, address position. Swing back, now drop down. So you're really opening up. Wow, to me that feels like I haven't really moved my body yet. And that's the whole idea. Those guys who are trying to get too early open like that, it's a great one for you. And I'll show you with a club in a minute. So if you had some drinks, you wouldn't spill it. Now from here, you're going from horizontal to impact back to vertical. So you're rotating your hands and re-rotating them back. Not really doing a lot with the body, let the body follow what the arms and hands are doing. Back up, drop it open. Wow, that feels really, look at where my right elbow is. Right elbow still under my left. So you can see it still from your view, you can see it under my left arm. And then rotate back. Show you from behind. Back swing. Now from here, the over the toppers are gonna to go that way and keep this right hand closed. I want you to go the other way and really open it as flat as you can. It's, wow, amazing. It's even more than I would do. And you won't be able to do this, especially when you hit a ball. The forces of that golf club will always wanna throw it away from you. So that's why you're gonna practice with this arm and this, these hands rotating and twisting under you. And you can imagine if I was in this position where the club would be behind you. And I'll show you with a club now about where it would be. So we can't do that. That's a great one for the indoors. Let me show you what you can do when there's a club in your hand. Okay, there's the tray exercise. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with a golf club as well. And I'll show you from behind, because this view, you're gonna probably benefit and see the results even more. So I'm gonna take the, my backswing. Now, those over the toppers are going this way. So you can go the other way. So I'm gonna flatten my hand off like I'm holding that tray. And wow, look where that golf club is. 
Now that's exaggerated. There's no way you're going to be able to do that, especially when you hit a golf ball, but it's great to practice opposite, and especially if it's slightly exaggerated as well. Wow, 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 wow. My, you can see what my left shoulder is doing. It's kind of very passive, and my hands are just dropping, letting my hand and club drop behind me. And then from there, if I kind of release back into impact, and then you can see that's pretty classic without me really doing too much. Start again, I can take my normal grip just from my backswing. And when I get up the top, I can open my hand and drop. So the feeling I have is my right elbow is right, is dropping under me, but I can really feel it in my right hand here. And my club, my plane of my club is very flat. Then from here, we're gonna rotate back into impact. So we're not gonna, from here, we're not gonna do it with our shoulders, we're just gonna re-rotate back with our arms. And that's a great exercise to do, and you can kind of blend that up as well. I'll show you one more time, and then we'll do it from the front view. And we're gonna blend it without stopping this time. So we're gonna drop, release. Now that's really exaggerated, and there's no way you'd be able to do that when the speed is layered on, especially when hitting a golf ball. But it's fantastic to give you the, other, the sense of the other side of the coin. And I'm always a big fan of feelings. And this will give you the feeling of something completely opposite compared to what you're used to if you're that person that, that swings over the top. Let me show you from the side view with a golf club. Normal grip, assuming you're taking your normal backswing and it's in relatively good shape. Now the over the toppers are kind of very quick to kind of fall in love with the golf ball and push everything out here and get this right side moving too quickly. This way, we're gonna flatten. Wow. Again, same as the, when I had the tray in my hand. Very closed off here with my body. And I don't think that's achievable when you hit a golf ball. And in fact, I know it's not achievable because the forces are gonna to wanna to go. But we're gonna practice holding back and waiting for it. And if you ever heard the, the term waiting for it, that's what it means. You're waiting for your hands and arms to drop out in front of you but the club's still flat behind you. It's not coming out with you at all. And then release back into impact. So imagine if I had the tray in my hand, flat, halfway down, or relatively just, just after halfway down with the left arm there. And then from here, we're rotating, re-rotating that hand back to vertical. So it's one of the great drills that you can do away from the golf course. And you know, like I said, you can do it whilst waiting for the kettle to boil. You can do it five minutes before you go to bed. You saw me do it with a golf club. You saw me do it with a tray. You don't really have to do it with both. You can do it with your hands together and practice that feeling of just from the transition down to halfway. Folks, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you took something out of it. Um, I would encourage you to do maybe two to five minutes a day, maybe not every day, three days a week, just to create those correct feelings. Um, and it's not all about the guys that are over the top. It would be if you want to create some more distance, if you want to improve your strike, um, this exercise is great. And I'm going to give you a quote by Ben Hogan. We've got a few Hogan things behind us, if I can get you in the shot here. And Hogan actually said, the flatter my swing, the fatter my wallet. I think that's a great quote. And what he meant by that was the more he can get the club shallow and on plane, the better he'll be. We can't all be Hogan's, we know, but we can take a little bit out of it. So everyone, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.